Hello, I have been getting a lot of questions on how I did this rose shot effect from my art film project. So I did comment on this effect briefly in the breakdown video, but that was more of a conceptual just here's the project file. So I thought I could do a um, tutorial on how to make this effect in Blender using only shaders. Once you know what nodes you're going to use, it's mostly a tweaking exercise and um, I think it's quite fun actually. So first what we're going to do, I'm going to use the Sketchfab add-on. There's an add-on where you can log into Sketchfab right into Blender. I'll leave the link in the description. It's a really powerful add-on. So if I click activate add-on, I think I am logged in. Yeah, and then I can search for Rose. And I'm gonna see if I can remember which one it was. Let me just search on their website instead. Yeah, it was this one by uh, Heliona. So let's search for Heliona. There we go, it's this one, yeah. So let's just click import on this model and you can see this is Creative Commons attribution. So if you're using this particular model, you have to give credit to the 3D artist. So yeah, there's gonna be a link in the description to where you can find this asset. So this is a beautiful 3D rose and it actually comes with a material, I think, or with a shader, yeah. This is uh, some legacy stuff, I think. But here is a really nice node setup, so you can go to material view and you can see that this is a really beautiful rose model. Look at this. So if you were in any way impressed by this shot, you should know that 90% of the work here is this beautiful 3D model that was already made by the artist Heliona. Heliona? Yeah. So what we're going to do is that we're going to make an uh, empty object. Let's set it to sphere and let's move it up. And let's press F2 and let's rename this to um, Transition Controller. We want to make a shader that is controlled by this empty object. Right now, I think this shader is a little bit too advanced. So we're going to try and just make things simple at first. And then make it gradually more and more advanced. Let's just delete this by... Uh, I want to hold down Control and right click. And then you can draw with this knife and then make a cut here. And then let's uh, take these nodes and move them over here because we don't want to use these right now. Let's start with a glass shader because the rose is made of glass. And then we're going to use a displacement texture. So I'm going to use a um, magic texture. And we can't really just pull the magic texture right into displacement because it just looks really, really weird. It's way too strong. We want to make it not so strong. And also mathematically, it's probably wrong as well. But that doesn't concern me too much. I'm more concerned about... Uh, how we are able to control this. So now let's um, use a displacement node and let's hold down control and let's drag this into the height and then let's lower the scale. And the scale is essentially the strength. So let's do 0 0.01, 0 0.001, um, 0 0.0005. Maybe yeah, that's cool. I just want to make it look a little bit uh, of, a, um, of a digital rose, you know? I think it looks cool that it has this uh, texture. And now let's save this. I'm just gonna save this to my desktop. Rose transition. Okay, so now the whole effect is all about using a gradient texture. So let's go Shift A, texture, gradient texture. And if you have the Node Wrangler add-on installed, you can just press Control T and you will get the texture coordinate and the mapping nodes. In Blender 3.5, I'm always lagging when I'm zooming in these nodes. And my the fans on my computer are spinning up as well. So I wonder if that's a bug or if I'm doing something wrong. Anyways, we're going to use this gradient texture to make a transition between this glass shader and a transparent shader. So let's make a um, mix shader and let's plug the gradient texture into the factor here. And then let's add a transparent shader and connect it to this. Now it's a little bit difficult to see what just happened, but if you hold down Control and Shift and select the gradient texture, and here you can see that it's black over here, and then it's a transition over to white over here. So it's a, it's a gradient. We want to make this gradient significantly sharper. So let's add a color ramp, converter color ramp, and now you can use Control and Shift to look at this. And now you can use this color ramp to control the transition, right? So let's first make it really sharp maybe like this, and then let's set it from linear to spherical. Oh, important, we forgot to set the texture coordinate to be the uh, transition controller. So let's hold down control and let's change this to object. And then let's pick the transition controller. And now you can move this transition controller up and down and you can see where we're going with this. If we now look at our mix shader, you can see that this is a transparent shader and a glass shader. If it doesn't look transparent, that's because the material has to be updated because we're watching this in the EV. So go to material properties and under viewport display, you can set the blend mode to alpha blend. Now you have this um, transparent effect. So it is the wrong way. So you can select the color ramp and go flip color ramp. 
Yeah, okay, perfect. And I wanna scale it down a little bit by pressing S. So it's more of a ball, you know? It's growing out like this instead of just being a like a scan. Okay, so now I think I want to make this a little bit sharper. You see this, it's still a little bit soft on the edges here. So that's all about just making this color ramp, these values more narrow. And if it's a little bit difficult to grab the one you want, you can uh, use this selection here and uh, just adjust the numbers instead. Or you can also use the constant but then I think that's too sharp. I want it to be a little bit soft at least. The thing about this transition effect is that you don't have motion blur on just these shader changes. So having it being a little bit blurry is sort of a way to fake the motion blur, I think. Okay, so now I think this is a little bit too uniform. You can obviously see that there's a sphere that is expanding like that. What I wanna do is I wanna break this up by using a, another texture, a Voronoi texture, so that instead of this is being a sphere, it is a Voronoi texture that is sort of it's eating, it's like, um, it's growing a little bit more organically. This is really difficult to explain with words, but once I show you the node, you will understand what I mean. So what we want to do is that we want to intercept it here, I think. So let's make a uh, Voronoi texture. There it is. And let's press control T. We want to use some math. So let's just set this to be uh, add for now. Yeah, here you can see, look at this. Look at that, something happens to this really sharp line here. But now there are some things that needs tweaking. For example, you can't really make it disappear. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. So what I've found to do is I've just used more math nodes. So for example, on this one, you can change the growth. So here you can, for example, drag it to minus 0.4 or something. Yeah, I think that's cool. Oh, and there are still some levitating pieces here. Can you see this? I think they can be removed by adding an other up here. Yeah, okay, cool, yeah, nice. I think the Voronoi texture in this transition effect looks a little bit better if you change it from F1 to smooth F1. Look at this, now it's a little bit smoother. Yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah, so I think what we're going to end up with is that we're going to start small. Okay, so let me be on frame one and let's go insert location and insert scale. And then let's move, uh, let's do 100 frames. And now if I press G and Z and I move this up, you can see that the entire rows isn't covered, right? But if you press S and then scale it up, then it will finish the transition like that. So let's go insert location and scale. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so now this is only in the material preview, but there are some challenges that are going to show up once we take this into cycles. So let's take this to the cycles render engine. So under render properties, I wanna set it to cycles and let's set it to rendered view. And just in the world properties, set the color to sky texture. And then in the top of the shader editor, you can change it to world. And here you can see we have the Nishita sky texture, which is amazing. And now let's lower the sun uh, elevation. So it's like a sunset, like that. And this is starting to look really good. But let me show you a very, very big problem with this effect. Now we're at the end of the animation, frame 200. But if we start going backwards like this, look at that. We get this really dark, weird thing going on. And what's happening here is a limitation in cycles, which is a completely necessary limitation. Because what Blender is doing here is that it's preventing the light from bouncing around unlimited amount of times. In fact, I think it's capped at eight bounces. So let's go to render properties and go to light paths. And here you can see the max bounces for the transparent is set to eight. So if you set this to 12, you can see it gets a little bit, um, a little bit of it goes away. And then you can try increasing it a little bit more and you take it all the way to, yeah, let's be safe and let's do uh, 96 or something. So now you can see that we have a beautiful rose. I think the displacement texture is too strong. Yeah, look at that. That's a little bit more beautiful, I think. It's a little subtle. And let's make it, uh, let's give it a scale of 45, I think. Okay, yeah, but still here you can see the glass hair is suffering from the same black artifacts. And that's because we haven't increased the light bounces for the, could it be transmission? Nope. Uh, glossy. Diffuse. Perhaps it's just the total. No, volume. Hmm. Okay, so I'm not really sure what's happening, but what I do know is that we can just increase all of these to something high, like uh, oh, 32. Hmm. I mean, it definitely looks cleaner. I just don't know why, where this darkness is coming from. Hang on, let me actually open up the old project file because I think 
I might have been using. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. I used a solidify modifier and I used a subdivision surface modifier. Let's actually just keep this open so we can go back and forth. So yeah, the glass here is uh, looks weird because it's uh, just one layer. It's infinitely thin and then it also needs more subdivisions. So let's add a modifier solidify. Let's just make this really thin. And then the subdivision surface modifier. Yeah, okay, there we go. Oh, look at that. That looks so much better. Look at this. This is beautiful. This looks amazing. I mean, this is all the credits to the artist Heliona for making this amazing rose. Look at that, how beautiful this is. Okay, and I also want to leave this ground plane up so we have some bounce light. But you can make it darker if you want to. And here you can see you're getting these random dots that is being placed over here and over there. You can fix this by going to the Voronoi texture and change the scale to 7 for example. And here you can see now you have some other placements. And now this is the point where you just start tweaking. You can also set it to 4D and then you can tweak this W value and you will get a different result on each thing because this is like the fourth dimension or something. Okay, so let's add the light. Hang on, let me actually try and open it up here instead. So yeah, because we have more uh, information in this direction. So yeah, on this uh, glass shader, we want to add light. So let's go shift A and use an add shader. And now that we have this add shader, we can add emission to this. So let's go shader, emission, let's plug it in here. And now you can see we just have this bright light that just added on top of this. So now what I want to do is I want to simply duplicate the gradient texture for the rows and you can select these two and control X. So now if you preview this with control shift click, we have this, which essentially is the uh, transition controller again, but we want to make another empty object, which is called a light controller. Let's make another one. Let's give this a different shape like a cube or something. And then you can right click adjust empty display size and let's move this up and let's press F2 and let's rename this to um, Rose Light Controller. So now we can set this to be the Rose Light Controller and we want to switch the color ramp and move it down. Yeah, we're starting to get a lot of nodes here. <laughs> so here we have the material output, the displacement, the transparency. We have the mix shader that combines the, so this is the controller Let's actually move the controller above. Yeah, let me just tidy things up here. So I want to make a uh, frame here. Let's take this and move it into the frame. And let's just call this, this is the transition, which goes into this mix node. So here you can see this is controlling the transition here. And you have a transparent, and then you just have this simple glass shader. And what we're now currently tweaking is the emission that happens at the very beginning, right here. This you see these dots here. But as you can see, these are not expanding in size. These light shapes here, these islands of light, they are also being controlled by the same transition controller. So they are not animated. I thought they were animated, but they're not. So the whole point of the rose light controller is to simply stop the rose from being an entire emissive object. So when the glass hair keeps growing, we want the rose light to stop like down here or something. So yeah, here you can see the rose is growing and then the light does not grow. We're growing, growing, and then the glass starts appearing, but the, the light down here does not grow. So let's change the color of the light to something warmer. I wanna go converter black body like this, and then let's make it much more powerful. Converter math, let's do uh, four or something. Yeah, you get that really beautiful warmth. I actually think we can make this color ramp um, smoother, not too smooth. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when, when it has reached like frame 130, I think, like 70%, I want to turn off the light. So let's go I here to insert a keyframe just on the light strength, not the position, just the strength. And then let's go to frame 180 and then let's set it to zero. We have to uh, select this node and then press shift F6 to go to the graph editor. And I want to just scale up this one. So we're getting more of an exponential uh, yeah, so you get this really beautiful fade down here. I'm gonna make this really nice and tidy so you can take a screenshot. Okay, so let me just tie one final explanation. The transition is controlled by the transition controller. You can move this up and down. Here you can see the rose goes from zero glass to 100% glass. And when it's not glass, it's transparency. And the reason why this works is because we have our light 
path bounces set to really high, like 96. So it takes a long time to render this, which is probably why you should do this in geometry nodes instead, but <laughs> let's just stay on topic here. <laughs> and then we have the rose core light, which is controlled by this empty object. And then we have the displacement texture, and then you have the transparent, which is basically the opposite of the glass. Oh, and yeah, there's also this effect where this texture is being sort of like expanded. So this explosion was a super simple texture. It's just this texture that is being projected. So it's like, it's expanding like that. And that is controlled using the exact same technique. So if you have followed this tutorial where you were able to make the glass being expanded by this empty object, you should also be able to make a texture like this expand in the same way. Let me just show you how you can add the texture on top of this. Under Object data properties, you can see there's UV maps. So you can make a new UV map. Let's just call this leaf expansion. And then you can just view this from above and you press U and then project from view. And now what you can do is you can simply go shift A image texture. And then you just find the texture that you have. Now, if you look at this, you can see that it's placed on top. Press tab first and then go shift F10. And then you have to go shift F10 again. And then you can just line this up. Now you have to use input UV map and then you change the UV map to be the leaf expansion. See that? So now if you go shift F5, now you can move this around and it will be the expansion, right? So I'm placing this on the center. I'm gonna connect this again. Shift A, shader, add shader. And you wanna add this on top. And then you can use an emission shader and make it like warm or whatever. Yeah, I don't really remember what the color was on this one. So yeah, now you can make another empty object. Let's just call this leaf explosion controller. And then you want to make a gradient texture. Control T, object, leaf explosion. And then you can, I think you should be able to put this into the multiply. Yeah. So let's look at the gradient texture, set it to spherical. So now if you increase the scale of your leaf explosion controller, you will get it like this. So now let's have a look at this again. Now you can expand this. See that? And then it has to be a different material for this bottom part so you can't really see it. Okay, let's actually just do a quick animation. I'm actually gonna set the step to two because I don't wanna render everything. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly render this out as an animation and see if it works. Okay, so the render is finished. Let's have a look. Yeah, this is not an impressive render, I think, but uh, it gets the message across that this effect is all about uh, breaking up that gradient transition from a glass shader to a transparent shader. Okay, so these are the nodes. Feel free to take a screenshot and you might have to dial in the color ramps and uh, also some of the strength. So I'm gonna highlight all the nodes that might need tweaking, but uh, feel free to screenshot this setup. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for all the amazing comments on this shot. <laughs> so many people have been commenting on it, it's really nice. And I'll probably find somewhere to share this project file. Could be on Patreon, I'm not sure yet. But uh, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.